Welcome to ECLMO Learning Simplified and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lesson, we discussed standard form and significant figures. Now in this lesson, we are going to discuss decimal places and the standard prefixes most commonly used in physics. My name is Albert. I hope you will enjoy the lesson. So by the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to describe how to assign specific decimal places to a number, then discuss the standard prefixes used in science and their significance. Then later, you should be able to handle few questions concerning decimal places and standard prefixes. So decimal points refers to a number of digits to the right of a decimal point, and this one determines the accuracy of, an, of a number of an operation, either multiplication, addition, subtraction, all those things. So number of decimal places are very important and we're going to consider the first case here. For example, if you have a number like 410.345, in this case, we start considering the number of decimal places right from this decimal point. So the first decimal point is this one, decimal place second, third. So this one is to three decimal places then we have another number second case like this one here if we have a number like uh, 0 0.000456 in this case we will start counting the number of decimal places right from this point then it's going to be one two three four five six this one is to six decimal places so we also have different ways in which we can assign decimal places depending on the type of operation that you are doing. In this case, if you are doing an addition or a subtraction, then you are going to assign number of decimal places depending on the number that you have with the least decimal places. So we are in this case, we say the result that you should get should have as many decimal places as the measurement with the fewest decimal places. And I want to give a very good example here. If you have numbers like 2.4, 2.56, and then you have 2.789, those are three numbers and we need to add them. So what we are saying here, the result that we will get should have as many decimal places as the number with the least number of decimal places in this list. Which number here has the least number of decimal places? The first one here, it has only one decimal place. The second one has two, the third one has three. So the result we will get, we must express it into one decimal place. And let's add them. In this case, we have 2.4, 2.4 plus 2.56, 2.56, we have two point, we have two point, we will add it to 2.789. We add it to 2.789. So in this case, it's going to give us, the answer it will give us is seven, seven point seven point seven four. Nine. But what have we just said? The result must have equal number of decimal places like the one with in the list with the least number of decimal places. So in this case, we will look at here. This is the first, first decimal place is here. It should only have one decimal place. So we look at the rest of the two numbers. This one we round off to this one. It becomes five. When we round off here, it becomes uh, eight. So our answer is going to be 7.8. That is very important. Then when we are doing a subtraction, let's say we have two numbers here. This is now a subtraction. You have a number like 5.0. Then you are subtracting uh, 2.56. So in this case, the, 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 the result you will get must have a number of decimal places like the one in the list with the fewest number of decimal places. This one has one. This one has two. So it should have one decimal place. So what we do here, we will, uh, we will subtract them 5.0 minus 2.56 
and in this case it's going to be 2.56 it's going to be 2.44 the result here it's going to be 2.44 but what have we said the result should get equal number of decimal places as the number in the list with the least number of decimal places so in this case we will look at the second number here if it's less than five we will discard it and then our answer is going to be 2.4 this is very important in science then another thing that you should note here is that during multiplication or division the result should have as many significant figures as the measurement with the fewest significant figure for example if you for example you want to multiply something like this is a multiplication now if you want to multiply a number like 1.20 in this case the three are significant then you want to multiply it with 0, 0.0 not even zero yeah zero one in this case the first one here has three significant figure the second one has only one significant figure so in this case when you multiply them the result you will get should have one significant figure the least the one with the least or the fewest significant figures so in this case if you multiply 1.20 times 0 0.01 the answer is going to be 0 0.012 in this case how many significant figures do we have here we have one significant figure second significant figure but we said the result should have as many significant figures as the number of significant figures that we had in the list so in this case our answer is, should be 0 0.01 since these two you cannot round off our answer should remain like that so let's do one question concerning decimal points the question reads find the area of a circle whose diameter is 7.0 centimeter express your answer into two decimal places so in this case we have a circle and the diameter of this circle is 7.0 centimeter and then they want us to give an answer into two decimal places area of a circle is equal to pi r squared and in this case we want to use pi as 22 over 7 so in this case we are going to find our area is equal to pi which is 22 over 7 times r in this case our r is 7 divided by 2 then squared in this case is going to be 22 over 7 times 3.5 squared which is going to give us 38.5 in this case it, since it, it is exactly 0.5 then they want us to give an answer in two decimal places then we have to add a zero there centimeters square so in this case we have found the area of that circle then we have this very important standard prefixes that we use in science so we have them in raised to power negative and we also have them raised to power which is a positive so we are going to begin with the negative power or power in negative index raised to power 10 raised to power negative 1 is called a centi and its symbol is d then 10 raised to power negative 2 centi its uh, symbol is small c then raised to 10 raised to power 3 milli and its symbol is small m then we have 10 raised to power 6 micro and its symbol is mu then 10 raised to power negative 9 it's nano and its symbol is n then raised 10 raised to power negative 12 pico and it's p then raised 10 raised to power negative 15 we call it femto and its symbol is f then we have 10 raised to power 18 ato and its power its symbol is small a then we have 10 raised to power 1 we call it deca and its symbol is da we have 10 raised to power positive 2 it is simple or it is a prefix is ecto h then we have 10 raised to power 3 kilo k it's simple is k like you say 1k 1k means it's 1000 10 raised to power 3 then we have mega 10 raised to power 6 
mega jackpot it means it's in a million raised to multiply by one by six zeros so it's mega and it's simple is capital m 10 raised to power 9 giga and it's simple is capital g 10 raised to 12 ter tera capital t then we have 10 raised to power 15 beta and it's p then 10 raised to 18 it's exa and it's simple is capital e so let's handle a few questions concerning standard prefixes and in this case the first question is express the following into si unit here we mean we are going to remove these uh, standard prefixes and then we will leave this in si unit like in this the first case we have current in ampere second we have potential difference or emf in voltage then the third one we have charges in coulombs and then we have pressure in pascal so in this case we want to remove these initials so in this case in the first case 5000 milliamperes this case merely we say it is the same as times 10 raised to power negative 3. So if we multiply 5000 times 10 raised to power negative 3, the same as 5000 ampere, we have removed. Now this m is the same as 10 raised to power negative 3. So times 10 raised to power negative 3, which is the same as 5000 times 1 over 10 raised to 3, which is the same as 5000 divided by 1000 in this case the zeros will cancel out like that and then we will remain with five amperes now we have removed the milli initial then number b 20k volts k we say it is the same as times 10 raised to power 3 so in this case we will have something like 20 k is the same as times 10 raised to power 3 then voltage then in this case our answer will be 20 times 1000 voltage which is the same as 20000 voltage then the, the the third one number c we have 50 micro coulombs micro is the same as micro here is the same as times 10 raised to power negative 6 so in this case for us to express this we can write it as 50 times 10 raised to power negative 6 then coulombs which is the same as 50 times 1 over 10 raised to power 6 from your indexes you know that then this is going to be the same as 50 divided by 1 2 3 4 5 6 then which is will give us 0 0.00005 coulombs then we have the last one number d 1000 mega pascal mega we said mega is the same as 10 raised to power 6 positive in this case so here it's going to be 1000 times 10 raised to power 6 then pascal then in this case it's going to be 1000 times 1 million then pascal which is the same as uh, 1 billion pascal like that very simple and very important in future so that marks the end of our lesson today in the next lesson we will discuss the oil drop experiment